Welcome to Epic Elite Prisoner, aka Von 2. So, level 23, this will uh, ding me to 24. And this will also be my last video in the Divine Crusader tree because I'm about to max that out. Now, if you're newer to Epic Destinies, uh, or you're coming back after a break, uh, it's important to know that you need to have your epic destinies maxed out in order to have access to certain epic destiny feats at level 26 and 28. And I mean maxed out, not just at level 5. They actually have to be totally capped. Just having them at level 5 is not good enough. So uh, if you are newer to, uh, to epic destinies and epic destiny feats, you're definitely going to want to take a look uh, on the wiki and uh, take a look at those feeds and see which ones you want and which which uh, destinies you'll have to have capped to have access to them. So having played through Divine Crusader now as a warlock, I definitely know that I don't want this to be, uh, this is not an option for me to be a permanent destiny, at least not for the way that I want to play this tune. Uh, one of the things, you know, this is, Ginger Locks only went to 20. so. Epics is new territory for me, for Warlock. So I'm still learning, and one of the things that, that I learned is that the Sacred Ground, you know, this is the, well, there's a whole series of things that it does when you when you max it out. You know, you start off with Consecration, Sacred Ground, and then Crusade. You know, the, it ticks for healing. It's a very popular twist uh, for non-native self-healers. <laughs> if you will but because of the way the warlock heals uh, this doesn't really mesh well with the with the warlock healing style if you will and that is the 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 leveraging of temporary hit points that's really what the warlock he healing is about at least that's been my experience in the enlightened spirit tree um, using the shining through leveraging stanch which I've been using that a ton for boss fights uh, we did uh, my guildy dread and I who I'm still TRing with uh, still leveling with uh, we two manned TOD uh, last night or a couple nights ago did about 25 minutes which is pretty good for at level uh, elite and you know, I was tanking Horoth and I must have used Stanch probably six or eight times. <laughs> so you, when you when you get hit, uh, when you take a big hit, I don't really have a way to throw a big heal on myself. And so, you know, Stanch and Shining Through are are what's compensating for that lack of sort of traditional healing. Okay, I'm rambling. So this would be the last uh, episode I do with Divine Crusader. I did uh, Von 4 in Unyielding Sentinel, and I really like how that was feeling. And I just did that one quest so far in Unyielding Sentinel. I was able to get my hit points, temporary hit points, up to well over 2,000. I had like almost 2,400 temporary hit points, uh, and that's just at level 23. So I can't wait to see what that's going to look like at 28. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to have to really leverage in order to be able to tank some of those epic elite raid bosses at endgame. Okay, enough of this. And uh, I, one of the things I didn't mention the last time I talked about enhancements is just the capstone. And if you're not familiar with the, the capstone for the Enlightened Spirit, it's really nice. Plus two con, plus two charisma, and while Celestial Spirit is enabled, and that's the thing that lets you hover around, gives you feather falling immune to knockdown. You gain 20% competence bonus to maximum hit points. That is huge, and that will stack with the 20% bonus from like Paladin, Fighter, and most importantly for me, un the Unyielding Sentinel bonus. You also get plus 10% melee and range power, universal spell power, and plus 20 light spell power. So this is a really nice capstone. I don't have anything to report on gear. And so right now I'm feeling a little undergeared. I'm still using heroic dragon scale. I'm going to be switching that over to epic dragon scale 25. Um, 
other than my Sonic 90 from the Epic Blasting Chime, I only have potency 52 for my Radiance and my Impulse, uh, or Force, I should say, my Light and Force damage, so that's pretty lame. Uh, I should have better than that, but uh, what I'm going to be doing is next level, I'm going to get Thunder Forge, and I'm going to take care of that. But so right now, this is quite a bit lower than, than where it should be. You know, if I, if I had, like, something with a red slot, I could put, like, I think it was 102 at this level, at level 22. 102 spell power. So. Um, but let's get started. Feeling a little squishy, so when I did Von 4 in Unyielding Sentinel, that I was feeling a lot better about that. So, as you may do, and I like to do when I do Von 2, is I like to get rid of the Beholders uh, first. I like to take care of those. Get them out of the way. I put on my Pale Lavender Ion Stone when I fight the Beholders so that they don't debuff me and I don't get jacked up by all their nasty spells. Looked like he didn't even get hit for this first few bursts. No problem. Got some negative levels. We can use our scrolls of greater restoration. Take care of those. And equip the silver flame talisman. So got debuffed. But, uh,. That's alright. As long as he can't insta-kill me, I'll be alright. So I mentioned before, you know, I am having to live with 9% spell failure, at least right now. At 25, I think I'm going to switch over to the Sky Vault Shield, and that'll put me down to 4% Arcane spell failure. Um, so I'm having to kind of watch when I'm buffing to make sure that my buffs actually do go into effect. A little irritating, but not a big deal. The you know, I'm not casting Finger Death. I'm not casting Trap the Soul anymore as the regular spells. I'm not spec for those, so they're just not hitting, period. So, the only sort of regular spell that I'm casting in combat is tentacles. Other than that, it's just buffs. So, you know, 9% spell failure, no big deal. I don't care. And you probably already know that you can just jump around here, come up here. Oh, look at that. Speaking of, there we go, jump. Come up here and just skip the puddings. And then you can use Misty Escape to just fly right across the jets. get 
this chest. I always forget to do that for some reason. I always just kill the beholder and run off without getting the chest. Now you get to watch me get lost in the maze. Not kidding either, because I'm not real good at this. I do know where this one is, though. This rune. Those guys just run up really quickly. There's like some Cujo action going on right there. Like, I thought they were halfway down the hall and like I turned back and then like a second later they were chewing on my face. Looks like the um, oh, can't remember the names of the Billy Celestial Spirit is making me so I don't get knocked down by the rack uh, breath, which is cool. But my understanding is that it, it, it's not working on it basically the same as Unyielding Sentinel standing against the tide. You know, you're still get, you're immune to knockdown except for the things that can knock you down, which is really freaking irritating, you know. I've definitely been knocked down by some things, and I can't remember what. It was like a giant pounce or something. Oh, I got knocked down by the, the by the Marut in Pawn 3. Stanch once during that fight. So using Stanch definitely starts to make shrines more of a thing. Now, um, like I said, I'm typically just using Stanch for boss fights, but I have been using it 
sometimes for like mini boss fights or other uh, fights where I have, you know, maybe like a lot of mobs hit me. And so I have been using shrines during quests a little bit. Champion chest, yoink. Memnos Blossom, thank you. a couple times there. And you can see, if you look in the buff bar, you can see there's a three by the stanch symbol. Let you know how many times you've made a deal with the devil. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have questions about uh, my videos, you can respond on YouTube. And if you have questions about the build I'm doing, you can respond on the DDO forums and in the Warlock forum. And if you happen to be on Sarlona, you're welcome to send me a tell.